Hello everyone, welcome back to Med School Moose. This is going to be Comlex Level 3 High Yield Facts Part 2. Um, just as I said in the prior video, these uh, facts are primarily geared towards Comlex Level 3, although a lot of them are applicable to the USMLE Step 3 as well. And this is information that I received, or I guess gathered, from the study resources that I used. So if you see study resources saying something else, I would probably go with that since it's consistent with your studying. Uh, that being said, let's go ahead and get started. First one here is going to be treatment of minimal change disease, and this is going to be oral prednisone. Pretty straightforward. Remember how common minimal change disease is in children. When should dual therapy be started to manage type 2 diabetes? This is for a hemoglobin A1c of 7.0 to 8.5%, and the typical regimen is metformin plus a sulfonylurea, uh, one of the more common ones being gliburide. And to follow that up, when should insulin be started to manage type 2 diabetes? This is when things get even worse, and you have a hemoglobin A1c of greater than 8.5. Definitely, definitely know this, especially with the Comlex. They love the primary care things. Diabetes management is bread and butter, so please know that. Next one, a positive anti-JO antibody is highly suggestive of blank. This is going to be polymyositis. I think everybody knows at this point that the, uh, the different antibodies are very high yield. Unfortunately, it's kind of just a lot of rote memorization. There are some study aids you can use out there, but positive anti-JO antibody is one that I always had a hard time remembering, and it is seen with polymyositis. Next one is treatment of acute otitis externa, not media. This is going to be otic ciprofloxacin drops, and the reason that it's ciprofloxacin is that the antibiotic must cover pseudomonas. Next one is description of vasa previa on ultrasound. This is something that always tripped me up for some reason, um, but the description is a linear sonolucent area passing over the internal cervical os that illuminates with color Doppler flow mapping. I think that's the most important thing. Vasa previa is essentially a preview of the vessels, preview of the vasculature. So seeing that it illuminates on color Doppler is a pretty high yield. The location of a hydrocele versus a spermatocele, not a super common question, but something that I did see thrown around a couple times, so I decided to include it. A hydrocele is going to be anterior and lateral to the testes. A spermatocele is going to be superior and posterior to the testes. The next one is treatment of antithrombin-3 deficiency. This is going to be fresh frozen plasma. Moving on from that, treatment of a known single infection with chlamydia trachomatis. Be sure to read these questions carefully when you're dealing with these. A known single infection. So that means that's telling you we do not need to cover for gonorrhea. If we're not sure, we typically cover for both, right? But a known single infection of, cl of chlamydia, we're going to treat with azithromycin one gram once. Moving on from that, the metabolic derangement that's caused by severe vomiting is going to be a hypokalemic, hypochloremic metabolic alkalosis. Remember, when there's severe vomiting, you're vomiting up the gastric contents, which is a lot of hydrochloric acid. So you're going to be losing chloride, hypochloremic, and you're going to be losing acid, which is where you get the metabolic alkalosis. Best prophylaxis against plasmodium falciparum. This is something that we don't see very much in, in common practice for most of us, uh, but it is on the boards a lot for whatever reason, just malaria, treatment, prevention, prophylaxis, all of that. So in this case, if it's two weeks prior to the patient leaving for their trip, the answer is going to be mefloquine. If it's for someone who's traveling at the last minute, it's going to be atovaquone proguanol. What is the gold standard for diagnosis of influenza? This is going to be reverse transcriptase PCR. We're going to keep going here. Treatment of Clostridium difficile colitis. Uh, I'm pretty sure that a lot of people would say that the answer in real life is different, but the answer for the boards is going to be oral vancomycin. What type of colonic polyp carries the greatest risk of malig malignancy? This is going to be the villus adenomatous polyps. I remember this one from the first aid book. I believe it said something about the villus being villainous because they cause malignancy. So villus adenomatous polyps carry the greatest risk of malignancy. First line treatment for smoking cessation. Two important drugs to know here, varenicline and bupropion. 
Uh, I like to remember Verena Clean by Verena Clean helps keep you clean. Uh, I'm seeing now that that's misspelled and I apologize, but Verena Clean helps keep you clean. And remember an important thing about bupropion, it's going to uh, lower your seizure threshold. When do gonorrheal and chlamydial conjunctivitis present in neonates? This is pretty high yield. So gonorrheal is typically first, and that's going to be two to five days after birth. Chlamydia is going to be five to 14 days after birth. So, you know, the, the classic vignette for this will be a neonate that has some conjunctivitis, some type of discharge, and they're going to give you how many days or weeks old that neonate is. That's going to be a very important uh, piece of information in differentiating if this is gonorrheal or chlamydial. Where do clapped skin tumors occur? This is something that I could never remember when I was studying. There's all these random tumors out there that they really like to throw around the fancy names. Clapped skin tumor is one of them, and that's going to be in the hepatic ducts. To follow that up, where do Krukenberg tumors occur? This is just another one of those. And these occur in the ovaries. And just another uh, point to note is that this is due to metastasis from the GI system. So clat skin is hepatic ducts. Krukenberg is ovaries. FDA approved drugs for treatment of fibromyalgia. There are three of them. So it's going to be duloxetine, pregabalin, and milnasopram. Hopefully I'm saying that right. But those are important to know for treatment of fibromyalgia. Treatment of bacterial meningitis in immunocompetent patients. Notice that immunocompetent is underlined. It's going to be a three-drug regimen, typically vancomycin, ceftriaxone, and steroids. And you're going to wait for the blood cultures in order to adjust treatment. To move on from that, treatment of bacterial meningitis in immunocompromised patients, you're going to be adding one drug here. So it's going to be vancomycin, ampicillin, ceftriaxone, and steroids. And the reason that you're adding ampicillin for these immunocompromised patients is to cover for listeria. The next one, blank, is a hallmark of early stage pancreatic cancer. This is going to be painless jaundice. First line treatment for panic disorder, you're going to be using your SSRIs. What are the two most common congenital heart defects? This is going to be a ventricular septal defect as well as a bicuspid aortic valve. Hormone levels in youth thyroid 6 syndrome. Complex level 3 loves to ask these questions where one hormone is elevated, something else is decreased, something else is normal. Um, so definitely be sure to be able to reason through the physiology for those uh, in this case, you're, for youth thyroid 6 syndrome, you're going to have a normal TSH, a low T3, and a normal T4. Um, this is something maybe I'll consider doing a video about these style of questions in particular, um, because you really need to be able to understand the physiology and rule out things and, and also identify uh, the wrong answers, identify what that is associated with. It really helps to get through those questions. When should calcium gluconate be given for hypocalcemia? Typically, it's going to be for serum levels less than 7.5 or and or if the patient has severe symptoms such as a laryngospasm or cardiac dysrhythmias. Obviously, if the patient has laryngospasm, that's no good. They are going to need calcium gluconate. What is OSPIT sign? This is a classic board question. I have seen this many, many times, and it is pinpoint bleeding of the skin of skin lesions after they are peeled off, and this is classic for psoriasis. So they even show you a picture of this, a psoriatic lesion that's peeled off, something along those lines, and it's called OSPIT sign. What is the most sensitive test for diagnosis of lupus? I believe this is the last uh, question in the set here. The most sensitive test is anti-nuclear antibody. I already made another video talking about sensitivity and specificity, but just to remember, highly sensitive test, snout, so if the test is highly sensitive and it's negative, that means you can rule the disease out. So if there's a vignette for a patient and they're talking about anti-nuclear antibody is negative, more than likely that patient will not have lupus. You can rule lupus out. All right, so that's the end of this video. This is a quick one. Uh, thank you so much for watching. As always, if you enjoy my content, if it's helping you in your studies, please like my videos, comment, uh, hit the subscribe button. Uh, recently reached uh, 8,000 subscribers, so super happy about that. Thank you so much for all of the support. Thank you for watching this video, and good luck studying.